Hello. I thought I'd do a hopefully short, lo-fi, mostly audio video following up on some comments after the last video. Uh, maybe this will end up being a regular thing, who knows? Um, I knew the, the Vettel thing might cause some discussion, as it was quite heated at the time, and that has continued. This video is much more about my opinion, for reasons that are probably obvious. I keep my normal videos pretty straight, so if you're not here for that, that's cool. This one's just a breezy little casual one. I will say though that my intention in the last video was to relay the rules and explain what happened with Vettel rather than get too opinionated, though I did sort of boil a couple of things down at the end to Vettel being a bit impatient, which I think is fair. Also, I just want to point out that I was only explaining the rules as they stand. There is definitely room to discuss changing the rules if they seem like they're not working anymore. But as the event is running, you can only act within the rules as they stand. And these are well-known rules. So having said all that, one thing that came up a lot was, why not just weigh only drivers who have actually set a time? And this, I, you know, I completely agree with this. It's a super easy, quick fix. So I doubt the FIA will do anything about it. I probably should have brought this up in the video, but I had quite a quick turnaround with this one. But again, I don't definitely disagree that being called in at a crucial moment when you haven't even set a time is super annoying. Any change to make this better in a fair way is great. Totally agreed. On board. Another comment I got in response to chatting about the Weybridge stuff, both on here and on Twitter, is well, what about Hamilton? In reference to him getting in the way of people a lot during qualifying. Firstly, let's just say that's a completely different thing to the Vettel thing. And I know there's a lot of mm, uh, opinion about who the FIA is biased for and against, and you know, that's, that's really not my bag. I don't really want to get into that. But I can see how it winds people up to see Vettel penalised and Hamilton not. So that out of the way, I think... I think Hamilton should have been at least officially investigated. It was weird that he wasn't. I think ultimately I agree with the decision not to penalise, but it was definitely worthy of investigation. Um, both incidents, to be honest. So with the Sorokin incident, they were both on outlaps. And the key here is that drivers on outlaps and inlaps are fed information from their teams about cars approaching on fast laps. As Sorokin was also on an outlap, Hamilton wasn't told anyone was coming. So he was faffing about and finding space and getting set up for his fast lap. It's not usual for teams to sort of jostle about at that part of their outlap. Sirotkin suddenly speeding up, as was his right, surprised Hamilton and he jumped in completely the wrong direction and got in Sirotkin's way. Now I think this was a bit silly from Hamilton, but just an accident from not really knowing what was going on and being caught out. Now with the Raikkonen incident, where Hamilton again dodged the wrong way as Kimi came through on a hot lap, it was also very silly. If Kimi had demonstrably had to slow down, you know, that would have been a slam dunk penalty. Now the FIA say there's no evidence that Kimi had to slow and his DRS stayed open, so it was all kind of okayed and drawn a line under. Now I'm happy to defer to the FIA on this, but it, it looked marginal, didn't it? In both incidences, I think Hamilton made mistakes and seemed very dozy. He definitely needed to be more alert in what was going on and Mercedes probably needed to be more on the ball with giving him information too. I also got asked about the Verstappen Ocon incident I definitely had no intention of making a whole video on it, so I'll just give my tuppence tape me here. Ocon had every right to unlap himself. He was on new super soft tyres and would benefit massively from getting a hoof on, whereas Verstappen was keeping everything cool and steady. I do think it would have been wiser for Verstappen to concede the space and let Ocon through. He didn't have to. But it would have saved everyone time overall. We've seen how much time can be lost squabbling for position even without incident. Having said that, while Ocon is entitled to unlap himself, he's not entitled to the space. In my opinion, unlapping is not the same as overtaking and you really should concede much more quickly as a lapped car than if you're a car fighting for position. Once Ocon saw Verstappen unwilling to give the place up, he, he should have retreated and maybe tried again later. Still though, Verstappen did slam the door on him quite aggressively. All in all, I don't think either driver did a brilliant job there. The reason I'd weight the blame much more towards Ocon is that he had much less right to the space or position than Max. I haven't really an opinion on whether the 10 second stop go penalty was too harsh or not, mind. You could debate that amongst yourselves. And that's my post-Brazil comment roundup, and I hope I didn't annoy anyone too much with my opinions. And my opinions actually aren't set in stone, so I'm very willing to listen to your thoughts as long as you, know, you don't immediately fall to angry slurs or hateful messages, as can happen on YouTube. So, you know, come on, let's not be those people. Next up, later in the week, a video about numbers of some description or another. Mysterious? I'll see you in a few days.